This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Apple Podcasts. Apple, where the only thing premium is the price. The Pod Shit Nerdcast. Alright, everyone, welcome to episode 14, the Pod Shit Nerdcast. I'm Brett Scott. Justin Logan. <laughs> and uh, this week we're gonna, we're gonna do something a little, a little wacky, a little crazy. We're going to split our podcast up. Now, I could have just not announced this at all and just tried to make it seem like uh, we were actually recording a long podcast, but why not? Why not have transparency? Plus, I want to see how it works out, and if people, like, think that it sounds okay, then maybe we can do it some other times, too, because it, we're, we're in a time crunch, and sometimes we have scheduling conflicts, and we don't have more than a half an hour to record, so we, we do a half an hour now, and a half an hour here in the next day or two, and hopefully put together a full podcast, so um, I don't know if we should... First things first, we're going to, in this segment review spider-man far from home and then the other segment will be a top five should we say what the top five is now i guess it doesn't matter it's gonna all be together so yeah it's gonna gonna be all together they're gonna hear a click and we're like here we are on exactly the same day for sure (laughs) and then we'll take off yes uh so yeah we're gonna do top five war slash military films i know that's totally not connected at all, but I kind of think that might be a good thing. Like, sometimes we've tried to do uh, related top five lists, which are cool, but I think kind of, like, throwing in something random as hell is good, too, because it's like, I don't know, maybe people listen to the end of the podcast. Like, if maybe they don't care about Spider-Man Far From Home, or they've already heard, like, 12 reviews of Far From Home, so they're like, fuck that, I don't want to listen to another review. But they can still skip to halfway through and listen to our top five that's completely unrelated. So, I don't know. It's a theory I have. We'll see what happens. Well, plus, there's like uh, 400,000 war movies, so there's a lot to choose from. Yeah. But I was, when I first thought of it, I was like, you could do wars, so military movies. And I was like, everyone's going to have the same top five. And then I was like, really thinking about it and there are so many goddamn movies based on war or like not even war but like military-esque shit yeah i mean if you wanted to really get into it you could say children of men could make the list yeah that's what i'm saying or like uh the last castle or something like there's all kinds of shit that's like war related or military related like uh i don't know shooter with mark Wahlberg. not that that's anywhere near my list but I'm just saying. Dude, Terminator 2, technically. Yeah. Future Wars. Doomsday. Judgment Day. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, we can make anything fall. We should just turn this into a war slash military podcast. And we can do <laughs> anything. We can be like, well, Spider-Man Far From Home, technically, I mean, it's in the aftermath of Infinity War and Endgame. So technically, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Let's go ahead and because I'm literally on a work break right now, so we're gonna try to bust this out in around 30 minutes and just give you the Spider-Man Far From Home review. So you start. We'll, we'll kind of go through it in order. So, like, beginning of the movie, what are your initial thoughts on it? It definitely had that same feel, like, oh, hey, here's teenage Spider-Man doing high school things. That's mm-hmm. cool. Uh, I really like the uh, the school news segment and how they showed actual footage of what they call the blip. So from what I understand, the snap is when everyone disappeared, and they're calling the blip when everyone reappeared. So yeah, it's two separate the, things. I was confused by that because I was like, why are they calling this thing the blip now? They always call it the snap. Yeah, I like well, blip, I, but I guess it, they're talking about two different things. Yeah, so, so I mean, the snap's bad, blip, I guess, good, considering. 
But I wanted to hear some more shit about how, like, people blipped back into the same spot. So his, you know, Aunt May went into it a little bit. You know, she was in her apartment, but people are living there now. Uh, that was a cool little story. But I wanted to hear, like, weren't people going to, like, blip, like, on top of a building that now isn't there and then fucking falling deep? Yeah. Like, there'd be all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, what if you, like, blipped into a, like, a brick wall? Yeah, it'd be like, uh, what was that, Philadelphia prod experiment or whatever, that story, like, they teleported a boat or a warship or some shit, and then guys came back, and they were, like, fucking half in the metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, but anyways, uh, got sidetracked pretty hard there, so. <laughs> fucking blip. Um, so, Mysterio is, like, he looks like a badass hero. Okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, back up. Because I want to give... My thoughts on the beginning are a little mixed. Because I know that they had to do a a segment there with, like, explaining how it worked out with, like, some of the kids being five years older and younger and shit. Yeah. But didn't it seem a little weird that they would be announcing this to the students because that was like a student news program. But I think that was the I think that was the first day back, and they were like their first week. They were going on a trip to like fucking I don't know. Sort no, of I don't think it was the first day back. I don't. I, I, don't was, think I thought it was the first day, man. Okay, I, even that, if that, it that's was the only the way it makes day. sense. Even if it was the first day, though, like wouldn't everyone <laughs> already know what the fuck yeah, happened? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's a high school news thing. Like, it's fucking cheesy and s- worthless anyways. Yeah. That that was another thing about it. Um, did you get – like, this is one of the first times in all of these movies that part of a, the movie felt like a Disney movie. Did you get that at all? Like, it uh, – the, the, it, it, it was that girl, dude. It was – um. His friend's girlfriend while on the trip, like, she was like a Disney – well, I guess in, in MJ as well. They're like Disney kids. It just felt like it, man. Yeah. I think it's just the age group. Yeah, I think maybe it's because it's it it's covering high school kids where all these other movies have been covering adults. I mean, like yeah. Robert Downey, you fucking 50-something-year-old Iron Man. You know, it's like – Yeah. Oh, it's a little bit – it's it's a little bit different tone. But even more so than – uh. Homecoming. I felt like it was a little more. No, it was a little more silly. It was a little more silly, like kiddish in the beginning. Yeah. Well, I mean, I well, you gotta you gotta compare Mysterio, whose whole thing is just he's outrageous, uh, versus Michael Keaton, who's serious as shit. Like he brought the serious vibe that sort of evened out that movie. This one yeah. had crazy on top of kids, and it was just. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Mysterio is more like, you know, it's like this, he's like this flying fucking magical. Yeah. It's a little more, it's a little less grounded than, than he's the just, he's Silicon Valley Loki. That's basically yeah. all he is. Yeah, I definitely got Loki vibes from him. I was like, oh, it's a very similar character. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really probably my only gripe in the whole movie is that it, it felt a little, it kind of had to, though, I mean, because it's about kids. But it felt a little Disney Channel-ish for the first, like, until Mysterio was introduced. Like, not in the not in the beginning part, which we totally skipped over. The, the beginning where Mysterio shows up and he's like, you want any part of this? Yeah. That was, like, the first scene in the movie. But uh, then when they get into the high school thing, I don't know. It just seemed a little kiddish. I don't know. It's just maybe it's just not aimed at me. Maybe that's all well, it is. The, there's also kids love Spider-Man too, so they have to play to both when it's his solo movie. True. Even with all the profanities that they throw into this thing, dude, Which, it was like a stab in the heart when the fucking multiverse wasn't just real. I wanted that so fucking bad. I know that that was my that was my. I wouldn't say it's really a complaint because. I don't care what they do. I just, like, in my heart, I'm like, it's the multiverse. This is how we get the X-Men. This is how we get the Fantastic Four. And, like, 
and then they just shit that down the fucking toilet. They're like, oh, why couldn't he have just been lying only about being a good guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. But well, I mean, also, why do you have actual real information, though? Why did he know it was Earth 616 the same way yes, Eric we... Selvig knew? Like, do you think, I mean, it could be a double fake, but I doubt it. Yeah, I was thinking that too, but yeah, I seriously doubt it. They're not going to be like, yeah, we were just kidding. No, we were just kidding that time. It's real. Multiverse is real. I, dude, but I'm lost now how they're fucking going to bring in the X-Men now and make it not stupid. Yeah. If, it, if it's not from another, like, I'm in these groups where people talk about this shit all the time, and they thought my idea was dumb. Like, they thought the multiverse idea was dumb. They're like, no, you can't do it that way. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no other way to do it. Like, you can't. Yeah. Unless it's, like, through time travel or something, there's no way that they can do it. It's either got to be time travel and it's got to be on, like, kind of like a, a new timeline, reset timeline, or it's got to be multiple universes, which would be ideal considering the comic books. That's a big part of the fucking comic books is, like, that there's a multiverse. There's all these different versions of the X-Men, different versions of Spider-Man and shit. So, I mean, they just made a fucking Spider-Man movie about it. I feel like, I feel like they have to do it. Anyway. They, if they, if they do something so fucking cheap to where we get X-Men, they're like, we've just been hiding. It's not safe for us. Like, I'm gonna yeah, be yeah. so fucking disappointed. Like, because the, the mutant villains wouldn't have hid. They'd have used no. it for their own gain and not given a shit. No, and especially high-profile fuckers like Magneto. Like, yeah, there's, and that's what these people in these fucking like MCU groups and stuff are trying to say. Like, oh, well, they've just been hiding out because they're mutants and you know they're persecuted. They don't want to be hated or you know. Well, it's like, okay, but if the fucking Earth is in danger, like they're all in danger. The Earth is going to be destroyed. The universe is going to be destroyed. It's like they're not going to help out against Thanos. It's not believable. Yeah. Professor X could have fucking ended that shit quick. Um, yeah. So the beginning, the, the stuff at the school, it was fine. It was funny. It was entertaining, but it felt a little kiddish. Once they introduced Mysterio, um, I, I thought it was kind of cool like I, I liked I mean you knew that turn at some point like all the whole time unless you're a little kid that knows nothing about Mysterio you know that yeah. he's bullshitting somewhere like he's pretending to be a good guy he's not going to be a fucking good guy but we didn't know exactly how the how it was done and it ended up being that he was using all these drones which I thought was Kind of cool. I mean, how else would you create illusions that everyone else believed? Unless you had, like, a bunch of big projectors, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I thought, like, the way they... The way they use tech in the in the uh, kind of explanation was pretty great. Like, at least he wasn't just, like, some magician. Like, or... Um, and, and the fact that they were all from Stark Industries was... It was a pretty cool thing. It's like once I got over the fact that okay, the multiverse isn't real, at least there was a decent explanation for who these people were and shit. Yeah, and how and how they were doing it. Uh, they even uh, got the guy that said, "I'm not Tony Stark." Like I can't believe they I got know. the same fucking actor. That was cool. That was cool. I, I wasn't even sure at first. I was like, I gotta go check and see if that's really the same, like, or if they shoehorned that in somehow, like retconned it. Well, I mean, and obviously they put, uh, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal standing off the side of the stage, just like, you weren't fucking there. <laughs> yeah, you were there, <laughs> Jake. You look, and that was 10 years ago. <laughs> you look different then. You were uh, in a tent 10 years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, one of the coolest parts, I thought, was when they when he's really using like all this illusion um once spider-man uh once peter had given him the glasses the edith glasses and then spider-man realized that he fucked up and he went to 
what he thought was Nick Fury and shit. Uh, that was a cool fucking sequence. Oh, that, that CGI looked badass. Like when he was, he just kept falling through different into different illusions and shit. Yeah. Oh, then Zombie Stark. That was cool. Yeah, it was like it was like a crazy fucking nightmare sequence. It was pretty badass. That was probably probably one of my favorite parts of the movie. Um, let's see. What? I don't think Mysterio's dead. How was him dying? Was another fucking drone? Oh yeah, for sure. But there, there's no way. People are all upset too. They're like, uh, they're like, oh, no, we're not gonna get the Sinister Six now. It's like this guy, his his literal like his entire persona, his entire thing, is is tricking people. Like that's that's his entire thing. Is like it, nothing is ever what it seems. It's always an illusion. Dude, so, it's the same people that were surprised when Loki was a dickhead fucking eight times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I thought he was good now. Um. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, well, <man. sighs> I, what, I, I, what did you think? About, I guess we'll go to the post credit scene because I mean everybody's fucking seen this thing by now, and anybody who's listening to this has probably already listened to other reviews, so I'm gonna go into like crazy detail. But mid credit scene, what do you think of the mid credit scene? The, that was the uh, identity thing. Yes. Okay. I mean, what I really liked is how okay, obviously they they got the same uh, Jameson. Yeah, like, J.K. Simmons. They brought him back. I, I mean, which is just perfect. I, but but I like how they changed his role. Like he went from being a newspaper editor to now he's the he's fucking Alex Jones, which was hilarious. Yeah, they did make him like that. I was reading an article about it, and what's funny is they said that um, like the actor himself and I think the director of the movie said. Like, no, he's he's actually literally just playing the character exactly the same way. All they did is put him in a different... Like, it's your perception that it has changed, the audience, because of Alex Jones being a thing. But he's literally acting the exact same way. Well, well yeah, but he was acting that way in an office, telling people how to write the newspaper. Right but now, he's, he's, he's broadcasting internet. it right to you. And you see the shitty graphics, and you just see a madman screaming as fast as he can, and you're just like, yeah. "What a what the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't. He was missing from Homecoming. There was no J. Jonah Jameson. Peter wasn't working as a photographer for the for the Daily Bugle. I thought it was pretty cool that they brought in. Was that in that mid credit scene? Was that the first time they showed him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking that was like earlier in the movie they showed him. Nope, but that was right it. That end. was like a big. That was one of the earth-shattering fucking reveals. Yeah, well, I think that the oh shit, this changes everything. Claims about it might have just been the oh no, now everyone knows Spider-Man is Peter Parker. But it's like, how many times has this happened in in comic books and movies where like. They find out the identity, and then somehow – you know what I mean? Like, to, to make it like, oh, it wasn't – I'm not Peter. Like, I'm not Spider-Man. It's that guy. And then there's a, another Spider-Man swinging around. It turns yeah. out to be some other guy. Like, I don't – I think there's going to be a way out of it. Like, everyone's like, oh, my God, now it's going to be – Everyone's going to know, but that's not really part of his character. You know what I mean? Like, a big part of Spider-Man's character is concealing his identity. Like, to protect people. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to stick. Mm, I, I think he's just going to be outed now. Because he always fucks everything up, so even if he tries to cover it up, he's going to fail. So you think you think it'll be like a... I saw people comparing it to Tony Stark. How he like outed himself. Yeah. And then just everyone just knows, like, oh oh yeah, it's it's fucking he's Iron Man. Yep. Well, I mean the thing is the the fact that he has all this shit now, he's sort of rich himself, so I mean 
I guess I that's guess, true. He has access to he, all this yeah, tech. He has, that, he has that same freedom, so he could just fucking... But the, the really shitty part is that now his uh, girlfriend's dad fucking knows. So that's going to be a an issue when he gets out of prison. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't... Hold on. The girl that he took to Homecoming in the first movie... Yeah. That's, MJ. that's not MJ. No, it's not yeah, it MJ. Is. It is MJ. No, it's not MJ. That's MJ. No, the girl he takes the homecoming in the first movie was not MJ. It... I swear it was MJ. No, that's it's how a I remember black it. Girl. MJ's black. No, she's not. She Zendaya might be... or whatever? Dude. This okay. not the same girl? I don't think he took that same girl to look. I swear he took her. Her okay, dad is the vulture. Okay, so it's all cool now. It's all cool. My dad's in prison. Like, she's just completely the same person. Like, finds out her dad's a fucking vulture and goes to prison and shit, and it's the same. I'm what gonna gonna, what's she going to do about it? I don't know. It just seems really odd to not address that at all. Well, I mean... Are you sure? I don't it's, think it's the he's, same he's girl. awkward and it's not cool to bring it up like, hey, so it's not hard your dad's in prison. The girl. Dude, the girl it's the same girl. No, no, no. The girl he invited to homecoming was popular. She was popular. The MJ character in this movie is like this awkward kind of nerdy chick, like kind of alternative. Maybe that's just because they're older now. I don't fucking know, man. It's the same girl. I'm not. See, now one of us is going to look really dumb. It's probably me. One of us is going to look really dumb. Like, we know so much about this shit. Uh, But when's the last time you watched Homecoming? Like, I haven't seen that in fucking years now. Um, a month ago. Oh, shit. I hope you're right, then. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, her name is Zendaya. I always remember because it's one fucking word. Yeah, that's Mary. That that's that's MJ's name. Yeah, it, it's not Mary. It's something something Jones. Like I it's still that. MJ, but it's some other name. Right. They did that. Okay. Who does Zendaya play in Spider Man Homecoming? Okay. Who is the love interest in Spider Man Homecoming? It turns out Liz, Parker's crush throughout the course of the movie, was a romantic red herring all along. Of course, fans guessed long ago that Zendaya would turn out to be MJ as the character is Peter Parker's canonical... (laughs) What the fuck was that word? (laughs) Canonical love interest and wholly vital to the Spider-Man universe. So, no, the girl he takes the homecoming was not MJ. It was a girl named Liz. Oh, fuck. I, I, okay, I completely remembered her as the same person. All okay. right, well, it's been a while. Okay, hold on, hold on. Spider-Man Homecoming. They don't just want to rehash the previous movies. In Spider-Man Homecoming, Ned Leeds was portrayed as a Hawaiian-American played by Jacob. Gwen Stacy is a very important to Peter Parker, as she's generally portrayed as his first love, and perhaps more importantly, one who dies a very tragic death. Okay, well, I was right. So, once again, your opinion was wrong. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let me get back uh, well, It's not uh, like it's still my opinion. I'm not fighting it, Fred. <laughs> I'm not calling it fake news and <laughs> pretending I want it. something. Stop. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. No, I'm not. <laughs> you have to keep it now. That's your opinion. No. You're like, nope. Nope. He took MJ to homecoming. No. It was weird. It was like uh, MJ was kind of like obsessed with him, like secretly and shit. She was like watching him and being all weird and shit. Okay. And gotcha. he was into this popular chick. And then he asked her homecoming. And then when he picks her up, so... I, the, the dad already knew. The dad already knew that Peter Parker was Spider Man. Okay, well, I thought it was Zend- Zendaya's dad, okay? Sorry. I thought it was going to be really fucking interesting, but now it's not. No, you failed. All right. Um, What about 
the, the post credit scene that everyone hyped so much online before the movie came out. I was going to fucking change the universe. Yeah. What did you uh, think? I, I was ready for some crazy ass shit. I was like, oh my god, that's Professor X! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Maybe, maybe even the... I, I don't give a shit about Fantastic Four, but like, I, I would have believed the hype if there was something about that, or like, I don't know, something else crazy, like, oh, somebody that died is back alive. But no, it it's, I think that the reason it was supposedly a big deal, and I'm still seeing online everywhere that, like, these are the two best post credit scene in years from the MCU, which, to be fair, there's been some really shitty post credit scenes. Like, dude, like I, I was really, I expected to go. Meanwhile, in Canada, and then it'd be fucking Wolverine <laughs> fighting Omega Red, and it'd be the craziest <laughs> battle we've ever seen. No setup, and then it just fucking fades to black. See, yeah, that would have been fucking crazy. That would have been maniacal. They could have done that, but no. Instead, they just show, oh no, it wasn't. You know what though? It made sense. So they show that. Nick Fury was not really Nick Fury. Um, uh, it was Scrolls. Scrolls were portraying Nick Fury and what's her name? Uh, Maria Mar- Hill. Maria Hill. And oh, sorry, I think that was Zendaya. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> she plays four characters in this film. Um. So that was the big reveal, uh, that it wasn't really them, and that Nick Fury is actually off on a fucking scroll ship somewhere out in space doing something. And I I think the only reason that everyone thinks that's a big deal is because there's like a comic storyline where the scrolls are like you don't know who the scrolls are, some characters in the MCU are scrolls, some people are not, and you don't know, you never know who's really a scroll and shit. And it gets, you know, crazy. And I think that's why. They're like, oh, they're setting up the fucking Scroll Wars or whatever the fuck it was called. Whatever it's called where the Scroll Invasion or something. It's called like Invasion or some shit like that. And I think that's why everyone was so excited. But to be honest, I'm not that excited about Scrolls. They they don't. Yeah. What did you think of this movie compared to uh, Captain Marvel? It, okay, I I don't know. Captain Marvel did more world building, even with the scroll shit. But yeah, it did good for did scrolls. It, this this had better action sequences. I, I would put them around the same rating. Like they're just you know mid grade Marvel movie. Now yeah. we get a big long break, so I'm sure we'll be ready for one next year. Yeah, I feel like. Uh... I feel like it's, I, I, I'm going to lump myself right into a fucking group of assholes, but I think this was better. Like, to me personally, I like it better. I like this movie better. I care about the character more. It was more fun. Um, but, yeah, it's this wasn't one of the top-tier movies, for sure. Yeah. And I probably honestly liked Home, Homecoming better than this one, like when it comes to the Spider-Man movies. I think I liked Homecoming because I like Michael Keaton in it so much. And, yeah. and and just what they did with it, like it's homecoming, how they didn't rehash the fucking origin story and they just jumped right in. I thought that was great. Um, I don't know. I, I think Homecoming to me is a better movie. I liked uh, Mysterio in this. I thought he was fucking great. I I was kind of a letdown though, like when it showed him without any of his shit on. And he was just like this pathetic little fucking weakling. Like, cause, it, cause at least he looked like, he looked like big and strong when he had all the shit yeah. on, like when he was the illusion or whatever. But he's really just like this little fucking geek, which I guess it falls in line with the comics and the TV show and stuff. But I think his muscles were real. And that, like, when I watched Spider-Man the animated series, I'm pretty sure he didn't change sizes. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's part of it. They want it, like, the whole thing is a show, so 
they should make him kind of weak at the end. Like, ah, uh, he's just a little bitch. I mean, and it's going to be a huge letdown when you're coming from Thanos with a fucking dual blade and then a guy with drones. Yeah, I I get it. I, I, it made sense. And also, also, um, like his backstory, they changed, right? Which is cool for these movies because they need to change some shit and they need to tie it to the rest of the universe. So that worked really well. But, you know, what? His real backstory is like he's like an actor or something, like a stuntman or a failed actor, some shit like that. And a lot of his stuff was like the reason he was such a master of illusion and stuff is because of that stuff. Like he did like special effects and shit for movies. Like that's what he did. But it, it, they had to make it a little more sciencey than that. That would have been kind of lame. He was like, oh yeah, I used to be an extra on Full House, and like now. Uh, you know, <laughs> fucking Peter Parker, god damn it. But yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's, uh, not a top tier movie. It's not, it's not top five. Probably not even top ten, really. But it was a good movie. I liked it better than Captain, I think it's better than Captain Marvel. Um, but, you know, nowhere near any of the fucking, like, Captain America films or, or uh, Iron Man, even like Iron Man One, uh, any of the Avenger movies, it wasn't above any of those. So, oh, watch this it's scroll good. shit's really gonna fuck us. And be like, he was Captain Scroll America the whole time. See, that's the thing though. That they they can do that now. That's that's what I'm. The only thing I don't like, you're kind of like me, right? Like, you don't really care for the fucking space shit as much. Yeah, I mean, it's not really as uh, relatable. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy is fun. They're fun movies, but yeah. I don't know. I like the Earthbound better. Yeah, I like grounded stuff. Like, it's just like Thor Ragnarok was good. Like, they did that really well. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy is great. And then the whole Thanos story was great. But it seems like they're moving in the, in the direction of, like, a whole bunch of space shit's going to happen now. And I, I don't know. It feels like we just got done facing a fucking space, space foe. Wait till Galactus is the thing, dude. It's gonna get yeah. even fucking crazier. I know. That's and that's what I'm thinking. It's gonna keep being like that. I just hope they. Didn't you say something about like they were doing like half grounded Earthbound movies and like half? Yeah, yeah. I heard that was the plan. I hope that's true. I hope they don't all just start being about, you know, fucking six galaxies away. Dude, watch. Keanu Reeves is going to be fucking Wolverine. I don't know. He's not going to be Wolverine. <laughs> He's Wouldn't old. that piss you off? I know. He might as well keep Jackman. No, I I, I, de- I think he's definitely going to have a role. What was it I sent you? Uh, Moon Knight. Moon Knight. See, that would be great. Because I don't know fucking Moon Knight from a fucking hole in the wall. I don't know shit about Moon Knight. So it'd be great. Anybody can play him. I don't give a shit. That's great. So but... You're telling me I can dodge moons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no have fucking clue what Moon Knight does. <laughs> you just have to remember the truth. There is no moon. <laughs> Dude, wasn't that a fucking top five uh, conspiracy? Remember that there is no moon? Yeah, yeah, that was my callback. Oh shit. Um, no, I think I, I heard something about, and I know they're they're all just rumors. There's like 15 got names that are floating around. Like, who's gonna play Wolverine? Like, I I heard uh, this Joel Edgerton guy. Did you see that guy? No, dude. I think Carl Urban would have been perfect, but. That show, The Boys, looks fucking awesome, so he should just do that. I hope that's good. I, I really do. That starts, like, next week, right? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I can't fucking wait. That's on Amazon. Dude, Boy, she smashes that man's head with her cooter, dude. It's a crazy <laughs> fucking preview. <laughs> I haven't heard the word cooter. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I broke it out. <laughs> I whipped out the old cooter. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, get away. 
<laughs> whipped out the old cooter. <laughs> Jesus. All right. On that note, I think we should wrap up this review. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, we're going to try to, in the next day or two, which to you guys, it'll be like four seconds. We'll be right back to do our top five war slash military films of all time. It's going to be good. All right, we good to go? All right, here we are. We're back on the exact same day. Like Only five minutes has passed. The last speaking. <laughs> are you using headphones today? No, I'm not. Okay. Do I sound fucked up? No, I think I think it's just I don't know. I think I'm just not used to it. Um. All right, so here we are. We're in segment two. This is our top five list, and we're doing the top five military slash war films. And uh, we don't have any questions this week, unfortunately. Uh, kind of sucks because that's our favorite thing to do. But uh, oh well. On with the show. So, do you have your list ready? I do have my list ready, but I have to preface this with so war movies aren't exactly my favorite. There's a lot to choose from, and I'm sure my list is trash to people that actually love war movies, and that's their thing. So I just want to say mine's probably a trash list, but it's not exactly, you know, I'm not the biggest fan. I like some of them. I don't really give a shit. That's all right. It it, it It's so personal. Like, I... That's that's why I like our top five lists because they're not like we're not proclaiming that these should be the top five on the fucking list. You know what I mean? This is just like what ones we like the most. So yeah, I'm cool with it. Some of mine are probably the same way. People be like, "What? You fucking left that out? You're a piece of trash." Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a personal list. Fuck it. Who cares? It's our show, dude. Fuck them. Yeah, I'll put the SpongeBob movie in there just to spite people. Fuck them. Yeah. I don't I'm care. I'm sure there's a way to connect it to war. Yeah. At one point, he was fighting the sun to survive, remember? War with the sun. Yeah, and you like, remember that level on uh, Super Mario 3? Oh, yeah, that fucking frown face sun that kept trying to get you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, bet, I bet if you think about it right now, you can actually hear the music. Yeah. Can, can you picture it? It's like the music yeah. automatically comes to your mind. All right. Um, I Do you want me to start it? I don't remember who started last time, but. I don't know. Go ahead. Let's hear your okay. five. My number five is probably the first war movie I ever remember watching when I was a little kid. And I've always thought it was fucking badass. And this is from. Charlie Sheen, before Charlie Sheen was Charlie Sheen. My number five is Platoon. Have you ever seen Platoon? Uh, I think I have, but I was really young, so I don't hardly remember any of it. I mean, you know, I sort of don't really give a shit about war movies enough to where I go out of my way to watch them all. Yeah, it, it, well, it's fucking classic. I think it's like a, I think it was like 1986, maybe, Platoon came yeah. out. But, um... Yeah, if you want to see something where, like, Charlie Sheen wasn't a fucking maniac yet, and, you know, whatever he is, it, it, he's actually a decent actor, and that movie was fucking fantastic. It just, you know, it basically just showed, like, Vietnam, a fucked up version of Vietnam, which most of the movies based on Vietnam are like that. They're, like, really fucked up stories about, like, stuff that soldiers, like, did or thought was okay or, like you know, fighting, fighting within the ranks of soldiers and, like, atrocities that they committed against villagers and stuff like that, so the whole movie's like an internal, it's like an internal uh, struggle within this platoon, like, it gets split mm -hmm. in half, you know, based on, like, who, who agrees with what they're doing and who doesn't and shit like that, and yeah, I just, it's fucking fantastic, like, the, the beginning of the movie, Charlie Sheen's, like, writing a letter home, and, uh, he, it just keeps showing him, like, he's on watch, and it's, like, you know, middle of the night, and he's, like, scared to death, and he's, as the scene, like, goes on, 
he becomes more and more covered in fucking mosquito bites. But by the end, he like, looks like he has chicken pox all over his face. Anyway, God. Platoon's my number five. What's your number five? All right. My number five is Braveheart. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I was just why think of that. Yeah. It's just it was a pretty good movie, man. Fucking bitch ass Longshanks comes in to fill the power vacuum and and he tells all his noblemen, Hey, you can fuck anybody's wife you want and then they do <laughs> and then they kill his wife and he freaks the fuck out. Pretty yeah, good I movie. Think, I think uh pretty good movie is a fucking understatement. That's one of my favorite movies <laughs> of all time. I just didn't think to put it on this list. <laughs> Holy oh shit. man, when they're like tearing his guts out, Jesus, dude, that was fucking hardcore. I remember one time I got fired from a job, but I fucking hated the job. <laughs> so I, I posted like on Facebook that that scene from Braveheart. It was just like freedom. <laughs> oh God. Uh, uh, let's see here. My number four was was really hard to narrow down. You got anything else to say about Braveheart? Um, it was a really long movie, but if it's a really long movie and I'll watch it all the way through to the end, it, you know what? That got me. You know what? Uh, I, I've bailed on stuff before. I didn't bail on this. Yeah, dude, it was so long that back when it came out, and you and you wanted to watch it on video, you had to get two video cassettes. To oh watch it. yeah, yeah, the old Titanic treatment, fucking yep. dual cassette, split in half. Um, yeah, number four, I think, was my hardest one. Hold on here, because I got a couple, couple written down here. Uh, god damn it. I think I gotta go with Enemy at the Gates. Have you ever seen that? Um, no. I don't think I have. So it's a World War II movie, but it's not your average World War II movie, because the focal point of the movie is the war between Russia and Germany. And like your hero in the movie is a Russian sniper. And then like, uh, it's a, it's, like, it's based on a true story. There was like this legendary fucking sniper named Yuli Vaisa. And he was like, supposedly one of the baddest snipers of all time. And he was this Russian in world war two. And, uh, basically he had a, like an arch nemesis who was also a sniper in the German ranks. And so uh-huh. it's this cool. Yeah. It's, it's really fucking, it's really fucking good movie. And but does it, it, does it, it end in a sniper battle? Yes, of course it is. Oh, fuck sniper yeah. Battle. It has to, but, um, I, it's got Ed Harris plays the German. And, um, uh, who's that? Who's that guy that was in captain Marvel? Jude law. Jude law plays the Russian. It's fucking oh. fantastic. It's one, like I said, it's on my top five. So, um, but it was cool because, you know, most, most war movies, at least especially here in the United States, are going to be about the American war. Yeah. And I just thought it was pretty cool. It was like to, to veer off from that and have a movie that had nothing to do with the Americans, like, and still be really impactful. Like, it was really fucking good. So that's my number four, uh, Enemy at the Gates. That sounds like now a solid you, movie. Oh, it is. It is. All right. So my number four is Inglorious Bastards. I knew that was going to make your list. It has to. It's so – it, it's crazy. It's just – I don't know. It's just a fun fucking movie. Did that make your Tarantino list? I can't remember. That was like our first episode. It, it, it did. It did. So, yeah. It that, for sure that, did, man. Now, we'll see how many more lists it makes. It, it sounds like it might be one of your favorite movies of all time. we we'll narrow it down. I just want to walk down, like, a an alleyway and, like, bounce a bat off the walls and someone's really fucking scared. Just seems like the coolest thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I mean, it, it's pro- probably was, the only war movie where Hitler gets shot in the face. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely a different feel of a war movie I mean, because it's a Tarantino flick. So it's going to be not your average war film, but yeah, it was a fucking fantastic. Like kind of like, kind of like my pick enemy at the gates, like 
it's not your normal war movie. It's like it veers off, and it de- that one definitely veers off from a normal war film. Fucking awesome movie. That it? Anything uh, else to say about it? No, man. I think Inglorious Bastards speaks for itself. It's that good. Yeah, if people haven't seen Inglorious Bastards, um, well, for one, if you're a Tarantino fan, you can't really call yourself a Tarantino fan if you haven't seen it. Uh, also, it's just fucking fantastic. You should watch it anyway, whether you like Tarantino or not. If you like war movies, you'll like it. If you like Tarantino movies, you'll like it. That's it. It's pretty yeah. fucking good. So if voting kicks ass, Mike Donnelly kicks ass. You put those two it together. It was definitely <laughs> on my radar for my top five, but it did not. Okay. Uh, number three. Number three, right? Yep, number three. My number three is Saving Private Ryan. You know this had to make the list. This came out, what was it, 1998? Ish, yeah, I think. That's Ish. probably the exact year. That sounds right. Yeah, 98. So I was like 14, 13, 14. And yeah. uh, this is this is a time when I was like really into like military shit. Like I, 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 my dream was like to fucking go into the Marine Corps. And it was like, I was so hyped when this movie came out. And then it got all this praise as like, by veterans as being accurate as fuck. Like, yeah, I pretty, pretty much nailed it. Like, most war movies, like, m- most movies that had tried to do World War II and had tried to do Normandy and shit like that, they just couldn't get it. It, it looked like pretend. And then this shit looked and felt really real. Uh, yeah. But yeah, and the story was fantastic, too. And the characters, fucking Tom Hanks. Um, and then you had all these all these little roles, like the people I even fucking notice, like Vin Diesel was in that bitch. Like all these, all these people that you don't even think about. And then like, uh, you know, private Ryan, uh, was, I don't know why his name just slipped my fucking Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it was actually a pretty small role. Uh, that was at the time when Matt Damon was, like, starting to blow up, like, the end of the yeah. 90s. Like, hey, around. you're Ben Affleck's friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and he wasn't even revealed, you know, till the end of the movie when they find him and shit. And then, yeah. like I said, he, he, it's not very long, like, that he's even in the movie. So, yeah, that was just one of the, that was one of the war movies that I saw. Like, okay, I guess I like war movies. All right. All right. All right. So you my number, to... my number three is Saving Private Ryan. Shut, shut <laughs> up. It is for real. This it is really so is. Funny. And it's just because you know Tom Hanks, whether he's a plastic cowboy, a <laughs> long-haired stranded man, or a, a fucking soldier, he just nails the shit. Tom Hanks can do no wrong. Yeah, I think he's one of the greatest of all time. I really do. And dude, that scene where uh, the guy gets killed—I can't—he's like in a house or whatever, and it's—I uh, uh, think the German, or whatever, like slowly sinks that fucking knife into him. Like you feel like you're dying when that happens. Yeah, as soon as you said when the guy gets killed in the house, I knew exactly what the fuck you were gonna say. That oh. was like, that was the hard like at that point in my life. I'm 14. That was the most fucked up, gruesome shit I ever saw. Like I was like. Oh no, 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 no. And he's like pleading with him, like, not to do it. He's like, no, 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 please, 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 please. And he just fucking slowly sinks that fucking bayonet, like, down into his chest. Oh my uh, god. Yeah, that was, that was bad. Alright. Um, we're at number two now? Number dose. Number two. By number two. Might surprise a lot of people. A lot of people probably have this up there on their list. A lot of people might have it at number one. I have Apocalypse Now at number two. It's another fucking Sheen movie, but this time it's Martin Sheen, who I like actually a lot better than Charlie. Um, 
I mean, neither compared to the boss, Emilio Estevez, but Martin Sheen in this movie was fucking so good. Like, have you seen Apocalypse Now? I have, um, but I was young when I saw it, so I'd have to give it another yeah. watch to, in order to know enough about it to include it or not. Yeah, Which you got to I, I assume I, mean, I assume it would be a list worthy based on all the praise. Dude, you got to see it now because I hadn't seen it probably since I was a kid. And I rewatched it just a couple weeks ago. Now, I think it was because we were talking about, or at least I was thinking about making this one of our lists. I'm like, what are war movies that I like? So I'm like looking through great war movies, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Apocalypse Now. I know it was good, but I don't really remember a whole lot about it. So I went back and watched it, and holy shit, it's fucking good, dude. Like, it's just like a character story. It's like, it's more like a two character story. Like, it could have taken place anywhere, but. It, fact that it took place in vietnam was fucking fantastic but the movie is about this this guy um martin sheen and he's like he's been i think he's on like his third tour in vietnam he's pretty fucking haggard he's thinking about killing himself and uh he he gets new orders and his new orders are to go and find this dissenter this guy who has like secluded himself in Cambodia and become almost like a like a religious worshipped guru and he's just murdering motherfuckers like he's it's it's really weird he becomes like this fucking tribal thing this guy who lives in the wilderness and he has all these people like worshipping him and he's just like off the rails psychotic and his job is to go hunt this guy down because this guy used to be a model soldier, right? And they don't want it to mm-hmm. get out that this guy is doing this crazy ass shit in Vietnam because it, it, it would look really fucking bad if it hit the papers and stuff. Like, oh, we got this rogue guy out just fucking stringing up and filleting fucking villagers and shit for no reason. But it's crazy, dude. So the, the whole movie is him trying to find this guy, hunting him down. And his job is, you know, to go in there and kill him. And then uh, the whole movie is like Martin Sheen. He's reading all the documents about this guy's life and stuff. And all the missions he's been on shit like that. And he's like, he starts to empathize with the guy. Mm-hmm. And he starts to understand. It, it's really weird. So by the end of the movie, he's like, he doesn't know if he wants to kill him. You know what I mean? It, yeah. By the time he gets there, he like feels sorry for him. But at the same time, he like, he actually kind of like, sees things from his perspective by the time he's there to kill him. Like, pretty fucking intense. So Apocalypse Now, number two. What is yours? All right, my number two is Full Metal Jacket. I knew it. It had to be because, dude, Vincent D'Onofrio, his role was amazing, even though it was just the first act, I guess, you know, capped off with him. Off yeah, himself. His, his, I mean, his, it's just his, his descent into, like, he was a failure, and then he finally got it, but he only got it because he just fucking broke, and then he just it went crazy. I mean, that, that was a pretty good arc. And then When's once the they get there... When's the last time you watched that? Uh, fuck, years, man. So, do you, let me ask you something, because this is a lot... I'll bet a lot of people, like, are the same way as me. Do you remember much of what happens at all after the boot camp segment of the movie? Um, I, okay, here's what I remember after that. And it's um, and you're right, it's not a whole lot. I remember that's when we get the iconic line from that hooker. Yeah. When they get over there, I remember that happens. And yep. I want to say Joker... Fuck, did someone jump on a grenade at some point? Am I thinking of a different one? Uh yeah, I think I think someone did. But that's, I guess that's my point. It's like the the beginning of that is so fucking remembered and iconic and then like once they get to Vietnam, which is actually the war part of the movie. Yeah. Like that's that's the forgettable part. I mean, probably not forgettable, like crazy shit yeah. happens. I mean, unless but, you just watched it. Yeah, all I remember is like you said, the the prostitute part which is at the same time that some guy steals his camera and <laughs> does a karate move and jumps on a scooter and dr- and drives away. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I remember. 
<laughs> Someone well, might it, have jumped it, on a grenade weird. at some point. <laughs> I, I think Vincent D'Onofrio had such a, I don't know, did such a good job that that's all you come away with from the movie. And that was yeah, good enough true. to make my number two. Like, that was just fucking good. Yeah, I think that that whole, it was basically half the movie was them in boot camp preparing for war and that whole story. So, yeah, it definitely made the movie. Like, if you didn't have that boot camp segment with Vincent D'Onofrio going mad, I don't think you'd yeah. have a movie at all. Just the idea that he, he started doing well because he broke. Like, that's just a crazy... I don't know, situation to think about. Yeah, and that it, it kind of speaks a lot to, like, military training. Is like, it's kind of the point. They're not, I mean, they're not trying to really make you um, murder people in your own fucking unit. But the idea is to break you from who you were, who you are, or whatever, and turn you into yeah. something else, right? Which yeah. he was, but it was, like, exaggerated. And it was like... Well, he didn't just transform. He, like he went yeah. off the fucking wheels. Yeah, it was fantastic. It, 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 I didn't, I didn't put it on my list just because I, I thought about that. I thought about the fact that the second yeah. half, I don't even remember. Well, I don't have a very deep well to draw from on these movies, so I had to sort of include it. And I remember I really liked that first part. Yeah, well, it was definitely, I definitely considered it heavily, but then I also thought too that you might be putting it on your list. I kind of wanted to have a different list, even though I fucking Saving Private Ryan, we have in the exact same spot. Yep, you can't escape. It's you can't not have Saving Private Ryan on the list. <laughs> All right, so we're at number one. My number, number one. Number one. Holy shit! The greatest war thing of all time. Wait, the reason wait, I see that. Let, let me guess. Let me guess. Can I take a guess at this? You're going to get it wrong. I, I think you're going to go in a different direction. I think you're going to say Starship Troopers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Start. How the fuck did you know that? I know you, Brett. I, I could feel it. I could feel you about to say this. And it you is a great movie. Up. And I just realized that. It, 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 it is fantastic. You know what? It it's actually has like a cult following. Do you know that? I loved that movie so much when it came. I saw it like three times in the theater. But you remember, I was a kid at the time, too. So, like, yeah. what I – that movie was made to be almost, like, spoofing, like, kind of making fun of the military and shit, like, making fun of yeah. – if you watch it, it's clearly, like, comedic. And, yeah. Uh, but the original story, the original book, was not at all comedic. It was just super fucking, like, right-wing-ish. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. wasn't – it wasn't made to be funny. So when they made the movie, they almost spoofed the book. Like it, it's, it's it's like the opposite of a uh, Warshack. The opposite yeah. effect. Like, yeah, that, that, he, that's he was what supposed I'm to be a spoof, and then but everyone loved him in the movie. It was yeah, right. That's exactly how it was. Like the the book was like Rorschach, and then like what they but what they intentionally did was like make fun of it, but. Uh, we just talked about it like that was actually my number one. <laughs> oh, you piece of shit. One. For real, you got me. What's your number one, Brett? <laughs> uh, my number one is actually not a movie, so I don't know if I kind of cheated or not. But You uh, uh, you for sure cheated, and I feel cheated personally. Well, I don't know how many times <laughs> you fucked up these lists just to fuck with me. <laughs> you know, I don't have a problem with All right. it. My Go number ahead. one is the series, the HBO series Band of Brothers. Which was basically Saving Private Ryan, except it's a completely true story, and it's a series rather than a fucking movie. But everything felt the same as Saving Private Ryan. I'm, I'm guessing you probably never watched Band of Brothers. I, I didn't. Okay, well, it's basically 13 hours of, or 10 hours of Saving Private Ryan. So it's like it covers this actual um, – this actual company, though, easy company, and their whole journey from fucking boot camp all the way to the end of the war in Europe. And it, all the characters are like real people that they actually have at the beginning and end of each episode. They have like the real people 
and like interview mm-hmm. talking and shit. Oh, it's so fucking good. But that is like one of the first things I watched. It made me like emotional and shit. And I I was still pretty young when Band of Brothers came out. Like it came out a, a few years after Saving Private Ryan did. But it was exactly the same. It's uh, Spielberg and Tom Hanks produced it together, um, directed it, and it had the exact same feel, the exact same, like, camera, like, everything about it was exactly the same, but it was just a different story, and it was a long, drawn-out fucking serial, you know, type, you know, and the fact that it was all true was the best fucking thing about it, and you, like, care deeply about these characters by the end, and it's like, just the fact, yeah, just the fact that it was true, like, all the shit you watch, and they're like, holy shit, that really fucking happened to these people. And, um, mm-hmm. but they were the first, like, one of the first, uh, paratroopers, paratrooper units is like the, the first people who are almost like guinea pigs. They're like, all right, we're going to start this new thing where we just skydive in behind enemy lines. So who wants to volunteer for that? And it pays like $2 more a month. So there's your incentive. Like, that's what it was. And it was like watching these guys figure it out and just. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was so fucking great. Band of Brothers. Uh, then later they did a uh, another one called the Pacific, and it was exactly the same, but it covered like a Marine unit going in um, to like the Philippines and shit, like Guadalcanal yeah. and shit like that. So anyway, Band of Brothers, fucking all time favorite. All right. So my number one. Um, this is where people that actually love these movies would be mad because it, I should be picking a classic like Apocalypse Now. But since I'm a fucking noob on all these uh war movies, I guess. Serious. Fury. Fucking loved it. I knew it. You know what? I loved Fury, man. I knew it. Now, Fury was fucking awesome, dude. I didn't I didn't watch it till much later. Like, it came out, and I just overlooked it. I'm like, eh, I'll Dude, check it out at some point. Shia LaBeouf can fucking act, and I don't care what anyone thinks about it. No, he's. I, I think he's one of the, the greatest of this generation. He's fucking fantastic. And that tank battle anything. was amazing, dude. Man. Where, where they fought the, uh, what, the Panzer? Yeah, dude. And I, he was just, like, cranking that fucking thing to try to turn it fast enough. And I was, like, edge of your seat shit. Yeah, and I've never seen a – I don't think before that I'd ever seen a movie that was based on fucking tanks like that. Yeah, like, we never get to see the interactions within – you know, on the inside of a tank. You don't, yeah. under, like, understand the whole dynamic in there, like, until this. Yeah, and then when you do – like, when you did – it would just be for a, a small segment of a movie. This one was fucking based on that, like the relationship of this crew in this fucking tank. It was fan. It was really fantastic. Like you're making me now. I kind of want to go back and watch it again. Those. Do really you cool. remember they were pulling into uh, a camp, and there was that body that was run over a million times. It was like a fucking Jello man. And they just <laughs> kept running it over because they didn't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> I don't remember, but like I'm, I, I'm, it's in my head now. I'm picturing it. <laughs> it's just this random dead body that was Ugh. just fucking rug. <laughs> Why'd you have to call it a Jello man? That's <laughs> what it looked like. <laughs> oh god, fucking Jello man, dude. It's like a like one of those bear skin rugs. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> The thing is, I think it was wearing, you know, like an American uniform. Like, it was just one of the guys that died. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, eh. Oh. Dude, I, yeah, Shia was fucking fantastic. Wasn't he, like, the super, like, fucking PTSD guy that, like, yeah. took no shit and he kept fucking with that new guy? Yeah. He, oh, he was, like, yeah. the most fucked up, probably. Dude, he's he's so fucking good. He's fucking good in everything. We're going to have to do a top five Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> I think we're going to have to. We'll give it a few more years, though, until he, until he gets a couple more under his belt. Yeah. But God damn, he's good. Uh, are there any movies coming out worth looking forward to besides the one Tarantino? Um, I don't know, dude. I mean, definitely, I, that's, 
I don't know. I'm... Yeah. I oh I did hear um I did hear you probably you probably don't know much about Sandman, do you? Not like Spider Man Sandman, but like the Vertigo comic book Sandman? No. Okay, well it's it's really highly critically acclaimed. It's like every everyone's got that like on their top five of fucking it was like seventy five issues or something. And it was just a nice long story, but anyway, they're fucking adapting that for Netflix. To a, for a series. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it, it, it's it's the same. The Sandman, like, is he a man made out of sand, or is no, it? No, 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 no. That's just it's the name of. Is it like a realistic type thing? I don't know a lot about it. No, I think it's like some supernatural shit. Like, oh, um, okay, a lot of based on like death and fucking. Like at one point, this guy like meets his long lost sister or something and finds out she is death incarnate like it's 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 fucking crazy crazy shit oh so sandman as if like he puts people to sleep yeah yeah i think so i I don't really don't know i don't know that's what i'm saying i I need to actually read it i've just always heard it's like one of the greatest of all time Uh now netflix is paying something stupid like like 200 million for it oh dude well they're also doing um the witcher which i I mean i've played i played the game and the game was fucking amazing Witcher I Three. I, I think and, it's already um, out, like in Europe. Really? Yeah. Oh shit! I may yeah, have to I find a way I... to get that. Mm. But um, apparently it's supposed to be their answer to Game of Thrones. Like they're putting that much money and that much yeah. into it. Mm. I don't see that. No. Oh, well, they just need a really good. They need a, a an amazing first five seasons, and then they can just sort of trail off. Yeah, just like Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's, that's all, all they need to do. Last season, they just fucking say, eh, and that's the end of it, fuck it. Yeah. Anybody can do it. They could have just, uh, like Breaking Bad, they could have let that thing run eight seasons and just fucking drove it into the ground. Yeah. Walking Dead, you know, Walking Dead, it's like after like season four, season three-ish, they're like, eh, okay. Well, once Walking the way, they... Dead stopped being about basic survival, it got kind of fucking stupid. Yeah, um, they just ended the comic. This was pretty cool, actually. They just ended the comic this week. It's done. It's over. It's no more fucking uh-huh. Walking Dead comic. And uh, the way they did it is fucking awesome. So they didn't, they didn't announce it like you know they always announce shit and try to make a big deal out of like so they can drum up sales for like the final issues and stuff. They're always like, it's gonna be the final fucking three issues and like blah blah blah. They didn't do that at all. They didn't tell anyone. In fact, they even faked it, and they, like, they, they put out solicitations for, like, the one after and the one after, and they even showed, like, fake covers for upcoming ones. Uh-huh. And then they just ended it. Like, they announced it, like, the day of, the day it was coming out. Like, by the way, that's, that's the last one. Like, really fucking random. There was, like, that, that's it. That was it. Enjoy it. Oh, but there shit. was no build-up. There was no fucking – I mean, they ended it. They, I don't know how, but they ended the story. But they didn't tell everyone that's where it was going to end or that the end was coming soon or anything. They, fucking, they actually told everybody it was going to keep going for a while. Pretty crazy. And I've, I've always thought about how amazing it would be if someone made a show, but deep in their heart they were just the worst kind of fucking troll. And they made a show that everyone got really invested in. And they ran it for like five seasons, and then the final, the, like the series finale, the, the character just like unzips their skin, and then they're just like a fucking animated dog, and it doesn't make any <laughs> sense, and there's no just, fucking reason for this. Just, just ruin it. Troll. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Just, I've I've always wanted a movie that just ended abruptly, forty five minutes in, the main character dies, and the credits start rolling. It would just be. <laughs> It'd be so realistic. Like, why wouldn't they? No one's ever thought to do that. Like, you just like, you got a movie, and then like the main character is driving down the street, and he's like, he's on his way to somewhere important or whatever, and he's like talking to the person in the seat next to him, and he's like, yeah. And when we get there, we got to move in fast, and then there's like fucking a semi bashes him from the side, and then that's, that's the end of the movie. That, that, see, and I would support that. I would go see that just so that way. 
that director would see, hey, that was a good idea. Yeah, I, I think so. And I would tell everyone to fucking see it. I'd be like, this is a fucking, this is one of the greatest movies of our time. Fucking, uh, what do they call it? Like cinematic fucking genius. I've always wanted that to happen. Like a main, or at least, at least like, uh, have a character that there's no way you think they're gonna die. It's one of those like plot armor type movies, but then actually kill them off. Right in the end. Or something where you think it's going to go on forever, like a John Wick or something. What if in John Wick 3, John Wick just fucking got killed? And it was like, and yeah. Like, r- no. Right at the beginning. Yeah, we, we we could have made billions more off of this franchise, but nope, he's dead. But that's the thing, man. It's like people aren't going to say no to all that money. Like I'm, I'm, That's why I'm surprised about the Walking Dead thing. They, with the comic book, they could have kept that going forever. I mean, they're doing it with the TV show, all these spinoffs and bullshit. Yeah. But they just ended the comic, and they could have drummed up a bunch of sales by by pumping it up and being like, "These are the final ten issues, whatever." But like, no, well, see, they're just like, we're, we're, and we're always taken by surprise by these types of things. But not everyone is like an endless pit of greed. So when this happens, yeah. it's like refreshing, and it's like, "Wow, a dude chose art over money. That's fucking crazy." Yeah, yeah, it makes it that much more like you appreciate it that much more though because. Yeah. It would be hard. I mean, if you had a steady flow of fucking income, and it was yeah. like, holy shit, and like people were asking you to make more of that, they're like, hey, can you make a different version of that, and we'll pay you fucking just as much to make a second one? It's like, it'd be hard to say no, especially if you like creating shit. You're like, okay, okay, yeah, 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 I can do that. It's like, not only do you get to be have fun with your own shit you created, but you also get paid a shit ton more. Like, it'd be really hard to say no. So yeah, I I uh, really admire that when someone can say yes to the storyteller, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, inside them and like, no to the greedy fuck. This was like, no, I think we're just going to end it here. Cause that would, that would serve the story best. Like that's fantastic. Um, anyway, I got to get into work. So. All right, man. This thing here. You have anything else to add? Um, no, hopefully I'll have a list I'm more knowledgeable about on the next one, oh, but yeah, that, you, get you know, to, you get to pick the next one, so. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm going to be knowledgeable as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Call the McGuire Wire. God damn it. It's 662 Pod Nerd. We put a greeting on there, so now you know when you call, you'll know that you're actually calling the Pod Shit Nerdcast, because I, th- I think before... I might have just had a standard, you know, cell phone voice on there. But yeah. I made it so it's official. People won't be confused. Call and leave us a message. Leave comments. Ask us questions. That That's what we really want is questions. Come up with some fucking cool questions for us or dumb questions for us or whatever because that's our favorite part of this whole thing is answering questions. And it usually leads to comedy gold. <laughs> so. Do that. Follow us on Facebook. Just look up the Pod Shit Nerdcast. Everywhere else, fucking Twitter, Instagram, all that bullshit. But most of, I post our stuff mostly on Facebook because that's where we have the most people following us so far. And um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, when's the next one? We aiming for two weeks? Yeah, I'm, we're always, <laughs> we're always aiming for two weeks. But, but we have extras to squeeze in to hit our goal. We do. We do. So, um, I don't know. I have a couple of days off this week coming up, so we might be able to squeeze some in. All right. Like, I have, like, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, so hopefully we can we can squeeze a couple in. Uh, but you got to come up with all, what you want to do first, so work on that. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to Episode 14 of the Pod Shit Nerdcast, and we will – Talk at you in a few weeks. Later. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Apple Podcasts. Apple, where the only thing premium is the price. The Pod Shit Nerdcast.
right, everyone, welcome to episode 14 of the Pod Shit Nerd 